So in this video, I'm gonna answer 25 questions that you asked me through Instagram and YouTube. And hopefully by the end of this video, you learn a little bit more about me and what I'm all about. Let's get to it. Why do you call yourself CubeSolf Hero when you rarely ever do cubing tutorials? And so for me, when I first started cubing and doing YouTube, I made a lot of tutorials. I'd say the first 40 or 50 videos were tutorials, very tutorial heavy. And I found them to be kind of boring to make, very long and drawn out. And I just didn't have any fun making them. So when I got into more, you know, fun editing type of stuff, like transitions and unboxings, I really found more joy in that. So that explains why I don't make more uh, tutorial type stuff. Now I do assembly tutorials and whatnot, but you're never gonna really see me do like solving tutorials. Uh, with that said, uh, the name CubeSolve Hero actually came from when I first started my channel, I, I was listening to Foreigner and it was Jukebox Hero. And so the name CubeSolve Hero just kind of naturally stuck in my head. So there's the origin story. When did you start cubing and who motivated you to start cubing? This all really started in middle school. My friends and I were all into memorizing the decimals after pi, decimals in pi, I should say. And when we got bored of that, we looked around at something different and someone picked up the Rubik's Cube and went from there. Uh, I stopped cubing probably around high school and didn't pick it up until about six years ago or so. So uh, I can't really say I was cubing for 25 years, but that's when it all started. What other hobbies do you have other than cubing? Uh, I, I have a lot of different things I do and that I enjoy. Um, one thing that most people don't know is that I'm really into crypto trading. Uh, I know there's a lot of controversy around that topic and whatnot, but you know, I enjoy looking at the charts, buying, selling, trading, NFTs and all that kind of stuff. So I, I've even thought about doing some kind of like cubing related NFT or for something for my channel. If you think that sounds interesting, let me know in the comments. I also love music. So I play a, a number of instruments, you know, guitar, drums, you know, a lot of different things out there. A lot of band type instruments like clarinet and trumpet and saxophone, things uh, that I did growing up. Favorite comp memory? For me, I really enjoy meeting people, having fun time going to comps and just making connections and friends. Um, I also really enjoy making everybody feel welcome. You know, the one thing that frustrates me most at, at any competition or anything in any community is when people don't feel accepted or wanted. So whenever I go, I always try to find people who are, you know, very kind of by themselves, doing their own thing, you know, and, and sometimes they want to be alone and focus on, you know, practicing, but a lot of times they're just nervous and don't want to make friends because they're, they're just scared of rejection. So I often, you know, go to those kids and just bring other kids together, bring them into a fold, and hopefully I can help them make a new connection in their community. Simply put, my favorite comp memory is just making friends. Can CubeSolve Hero teach us how to edit those really cool and amazing videos? And the answer is yes. You know, if, if you guys would like to see tutorials on how to edit videos and what I do to kind of do my transitions and timings, let me know in the comments if you think that would be a useful series. Um, I don't want to just make content that no one will watch. So if you find that useful, uh, let me know in the comments. How long do you spend editing and creating each week versus, you know, improving and in, in, uh, cubing each week? For me, I spend probably 15 to 20 hours each week, you know, creating content, doing planning, filming, editing, and all that stuff. Uh, as far as cubing goes, I'm probably cubing for about an hour or two each week. You know, nothing super crazy hard, but you know, enough to kind of keep me, you know, keep me loose and cubing and kind of, you know, having more fun, focusing on the fun with it. At this point in my life, I really enjoy the editing type of thing. So I enjoy unboxings and making reviews and tutorials and doing things that are more, like dynamic and edit heavy. So that's just you know what I enjoy doing right now. Do you have any tips to memorize algorithms? Honestly, the only tip I have is just practice and watch JPerm. <laughs> that's probably the two things that I do. What are your top five favorite YouTubers? I mean, the first one's obvious, Mini Cube Soft Hero, because she's just too cute. And it might be slightly biased. Uh, I'd say in that top five, in no particular order, I got probably J Perm because I watch him for tutorial based stuff, which is very helpful for learning. Uh, Captain Cuber because he's funny, makes me laugh. Gotta say Tingman because I, I love his family focused content, very wholesome. And I, and I just really enjoy that kind of stuff. And I really enjoy uh, Cubehead. You know, Cubehead's really creative in this space. You know, a lot of his film work is also very inspirational. So I, I like his ability to storytell. He's just also all around entertaining. 
Can we get a mini cube solve hero hand reveal? Well, before I can offer that up, I have to see mini cube solve hero hit 10,000 subs. So if you want to help her get closer, I'll keep her channel link in the description. I think she's at like 2,500. So only 7,500 more to go. I'm losing motivation to cube. And can you give me tips on how to not be bored of cubic? Honestly, I, I would just try different size cubes or shape mods or maybe just take some pressure off of a cubing goal. I know for me, I really enjoy having fun with this. This is more of a fun hobby and I don't go into cubing looking to break records or anything. I just do it to have fun. I really enjoy the, the casualness of it, the peacefulness of it. When people ask me to solve a cube, I really enjoy the reactions. I also make YouTube videos. YouTube is a way that I can, you know, kind of flex my creativity and uh, give me a chance to really do something beyond just cubing. How long do you think, I'm gonna butcher the name, Yu Shang Du is gonna hold the world record for three by three? Personally, I think Max Park's gonna break it this year. He's absolutely crushing it. Um, in competition. And so now that, you know, a lot of these COVID restrictions are getting lifted, uh, I can see him going to more competitions and breaking that record. How many subscribers did you have when you got sponsored? And this question kind of gets asked a lot. And for me, I had about 500 subscribers. I'd also been doing YouTube for over a year. I, I reached out to Speed Cube Shop and you know, they have a, a, a place where you can apply for sponsorships. And I did that and they reached back out and said, we'd love to sponsor you and the rest is history. There's really no set subscriber amount that you need to have to be sponsored. Speed Cube Shop and I would say any cube shop is looking for someone who stands out. So just do what you love, you know, whether that's making tutorials or making unboxings or whatever, stick to it, evolve, get better at what you do and just have fun with it. If you were to actually sit down with no distractions and solve the 17 by 17, how long would it take? Honestly, this is probably gonna take about eight hours, maybe longer, but I have a really big Yushin 17 by 17 and it's really hard to turn. I, I would say it would take me a full work day <laughs> to do and I honestly, I'll, I'll probably solve that over the course of a month. Would you rather have 1 million YouTube subscribers or hold the world record? I would rather have 1 million subscribers than a world record. You know, not that world records are bad and uh, that speed cubing is bad in any way, but I really like the idea of inspiring others and bringing communities together. And that's a lot easier to do when you have a million subscribers. If you want to help me get to a million subscribers, uh, don't forget to click that subscribe button and bell to be notified of upcoming videos. Any subscriber is welcome here and ho hopefully you find this content fun and you enjoy this community. Why did you start a YouTube channel and what motivates you to keep uploading? So I, I originally started making YouTube content because I was on YouTube looking for tutorials and things to kind of remind myself on how to solve. And I really couldn't find any content that I enjoyed at the time. So my thought was, well, I enjoy video editing and I enjoy cubing, so why not make a channel kind of focusing on tutorials and making those things uh, more dynamic. Over time, it's more from a tutorial based channel to more of an unboxing and fun and, you know, kind of hyper focus on editing and visual effects. Um, over time, over 300 and almost 350 videos kind of honed in on what I really enjoy making. So hopefully the community that I have around that really appreciates the edits and, you know, the attention to detail and, and just like kind of the fun, lighthearted community aspect of my channel. Why is your turning style so weird? <laughs> Uh, I've been cubing for a long time and honestly, it kind of falls into the category of it's hard to teach an old dog new tricks. I've tried. Uh, I just can't move my hands in a different way. You know, so the way I turn with like double flicking and in some cases or, you know, how I kind of re-grip, that's just from old habits. So uh, <laughs> it's not because I lack innovation. I just simply can't do it. My hands just will not turn in those ways. M my muscle memory is locked in. What is your favorite cube in your collection? For me, this one's hard because I have two. Uh, I have my signed GAN cube from GAN. That means a lot to me because that's what I got when me and Cameron met up with GAN after CES in Vegas for dinner. And there's a cubing stories about that. I also have my JPerm signed cube, which has sentimental value to me. You know, I'm not like fanboying over JPerm, but it was a really good memory from the SCS Open that we both did. And so uh, I have a video from that as well. So both these cubes are my favorite for different reasons and they have a lot of more, they have a lot more sentimental value. What video editor do you use? 
So for the first 320 videos or so, I used iMovie. I was very comfortable with that. I wasn't really growing and I feel like I could use that program to its absolute max. To up my game, you know, I created a new studio in here and I really wanted to up my visual game. So I started using Final Cut Pro and that's been pretty good. I've been learning a lot about green screen effects and you know, better transitions and just things I can do in my channel that I couldn't do with iMovie. So hopefully you've all seen the quality increase and uh, yeah, that's what I'm doing now. Which is your favorite cosmic lube? For me, Martian is my overall favorite Cuban lube. Uh, but I also really enjoy solar, and I often mix the two together. If you can go back in time and give your past self any 3x3 three three to start cubing, what would it be? And for me, this one's not that difficult because I've always enjoyed my Cosmic GTS 3M with ridges. To this day, it's still my favorite cube. Uh, it's just, it's perfectly dialed in. I love the ridges. They don't sell these anymore with the ridges, which is sad, but man, this cube is just game changing and I love the way it feels. And this is a fitting 21st question because will I ever get a 21 by 21? And for me, I'm not gonna buy it, but if Speed Cube Shop wants to send it to me to watch me break it down and rebuild it, it's all on them. So ball is in your court, at Speed Cube Shop. How fast are you at three by three? I'm averaging around 20 seconds. Uh, not the fastest, not the slowest. I could hold myself up in a competition, but the older I get, the less of a priority breaking records are. So for me, I just have more fun doing it. Favorite YouTuber outside of cubing? I would probably have to say Mr. Beast. Uh, I mean, despite the fact that he's got a big channel and whatnot, but he does a lot of good in the world, I feel like. And he's also very, you know, very generous person, very fun to watch, very dynamic. You know, a lot of what I try to do is pulling inspiration from those kinds of videos and how I engage my audience and whatnot. So I'll never be a Mr. Beast, but there are a lot of things that I appreciate about him you know, and why I keep watching his videos. So I'm always drawn to what he does and what he comes up with. How to win a giveaway without a YouTube channel? Well, I do all my giveaways through gleam.io. There are always multiple ways to enter. And on that note, I am gonna be doing a giveaway soon, so stay tuned for that. Again, subscribe, hit those notifications to be updated on those videos when they come. Uh, and trust me, on all my platforms, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, I'm gonna have it broadcasted on all those. So, you know, if you follow me on any of those mediums, you'll definitely be notified of that giveaway. And last question, and this is a bit of a long one because I really wanted to answer all these questions. What sets you apart from other cubers? Uh, I have to say I'm probably 20 years older than most. I know there's a lot of older cubers, but that definitely sets me apart from most. What are your future goals in the cubing scene? And honestly, this is a good question. And this question alone would probably be a whole video. Simply put, I live in Las Vegas. I really want to focus on the community in Las Vegas and cubing through competitions and, and kind of getting involved with that area, as well as the online community and focusing on all that. I'm really community focused and I love to see this community grow, get bigger and, you know, just join together. What are the best and worst parts about being sponsored? Well, the best are obvious. I get free cubes. I get early access to technology and try things out. I would say the worst part about being sponsored is probably the expectations. For the most part, people expect me to be a really fast speed cuber because I'm sponsored. And that's really just a kind of a false impression. <laughs> you know, like, like just because I have a channel and just because I have a sponsorship doesn't mean I have to be world-class fast. It's nice to be fast. And I mean, if I was solving the cube in two minutes, it'd be different than 20 seconds. Uh, but as far as what I provide, like for me, you know, when I was sponsored by Speedcube Shop, they recognized that I was different from other people and that I had a community that was growing around me. And hopefully everyone that watches my channel really appreciates the fact that I just try to have fun with this and I'm, you know, more casual. I focus on good edits and that's just my strength. Do you have any cubing rituals I mean, before and after a competition? For me, before a competition, I have none. I like to go into a competition pretty level and I don't think too much, I don't practice much. I just kind of go into it and I just rock it. You know, I'm there primarily to have fun with the community and enjoy people and meeting people and making friends, taking pictures and making a vlog. That's really what I enjoy most about competitions. My post competition ritual is a bit different and it's always the same. And I'm, I'm kind of ashamed to say this, but every time I always get a McDonald's 10 piece chicken nugget meal, large size. I don't know why, it's, just, it's, it's not a good healthy alternative. Uh, I don't typically eat McDonald's, so it's funny that I go there and I get it every time. It's like my body's just like, give me McNuggets. So 
Uh, that's my post-competition ritual. Uh, what's the only reason why I would give up cubing? And that's easy. If I stop having fun cubing, or with this whole thing, I just stop doing it. Do you cube while listening to music? And I don't listen to music while I cube. I find music to be distracting when I'm cubing. So I just try to focus on that part of the fun. I don't need to be hyper-focused on time or whatever. So just merely cubing is fun for me. What beverage do you enjoy while you cube? Well, the same beverage that I enjoy while making this video. I enjoy my Spindrifts uh, flavored sparkling fizzy water. You know, they're you know, really tasty, made with natural sugars. Last question, what's my favorite place to cube? And this place used to be a lot of places over the time. Uh, and now that I live in Vegas and I've made my backyard into my overall sanctuary, I would say my backyard is my absolute favorite place to cube. It's where I go to relax and chill. And it's just, it's a paradise to me. So I like cubing where I feel comfortable and I feel most comfortable in my backyard.